Hello everyone, Shrieks here, and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot. I've taken the liberty to immediately go into the stage and there get started with the episode. <laughs> this is a repeat stage anyway. We're only here because of collecting the red gem in the previous episode. And the red gem can also be used in order to get 100% in this stage. And therefore collecting the clear gem that is here that we were forced to skip. Allow me to do that quickly. In the previous couple of episodes I did get... Um, a bit annoyed by the fact that most of the episode time was eaten up by older stages. <laughs> and over here I'm going to try to um, limit that time by quickly going into the stage. And not waste too much time. This is actually the easier of the two bridge stages and therefore... Something I should hopefully be able to do quite quickly. And this is not very promising though. <laughs> At least I died close to the checkpoint, so I'm not losing too much time. I always get confused by these hawks running around. I never really calculate correctly where they're going to stop and turn around again. <laughs> Usually they end up surprising me. Just keep an eye out on the right, because a red gem platform is going to be there now. <laughs> right on schedule. <laughs> Let's go see where it takes us. Secret hidden area to the right, containing some more crates. But, but be careful, this is actually going to be a puzzle. We can see a TNT crate over here, but those we obviously cannot hit. That will only kill us. <laughs> we need to approach it a bit differently. Here's a TNT crate we can hit, because if we hit it with our heads, it won't blow up instantly. It will spawn a crate over here, which we can use to bounce and hit this switch over here. And then use this crate over here to get on these. And find out the middle of those boxes is actually another switch. And that will spawn four crates over here. And one of them being an Aku Aku. <laughs> the rest is going to be one up. Those are going to be useless. And then we still need to take care of the final TNT crate. And that can be taken care of like this. Another one has spawned beside it. And that we can use to safely blow up both of them. And that way you get all of the crates in this little area. Just kill yourself if you actually fail somewhere. And that's not that big of a deal. But it is obvious you only get one chance to do this right. <laughs> if you actually screw up over here, you won't get a second chance. Then you will be forced to actually kill yourself quickly. But besides that, let's go finish off the stage. There's one more part after the finish line that we also need to do. But for that we first need to get ourselves to the end. <laughs> Hopefully that can be taken care of quite quickly. Stages like these shouldn't be a problem for me anymore. <laughs> I had enough practice in these. Yeah. Time for a bounce quickly. Also needs to happen of course. Bam. Don't get squished in here. <laughs> oh, seriously? That's what you get for trying to do it fast. Jump at the final pixel. Apparently everything before that is not good enough. <laughs> right, there we go. Hi Tana. Bye Tana. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I made that joke already in the earlier episode. <laughs> well, final part of the stage. In this first stage, the part with the turtles was all the way at the end, as we may remember. And this is going to be the final challenge. There we go. Still missing two more crates. But that can be taken care of by the final platform that I promised you. <laughs> Try not to step on the goal accidentally, because then you will still leave the stage without you. One thing too. The Wampa Fruits are there to show you where the invisible platforms are, but even then you can actually miss them. <laughs> well, dying is better than accidentally stepping on the ending platform. <laughs> because this way you can at least try again. Make sure to step on the Wampa Fruit and nothing else. Jump. I love that shadow in uh, mid air the moment we jump. <laughs> also looks strange. 
But anyway, here's the final two crates. A lot of wonderful food in case you were still in dire need of some one-ups. <laughs> and another exit platform. Giving us gem number 19. Completion rate 73, of course. The moment you've already completed the stage and only get the gem, that is always good for one extra percentage in your completion rate and nothing more. <laughs> Even those 1% we need. And what we also need is new stages. Don't we? <laughs> now that we've done both of the stages that required the red gem in order to achieve 100%, it is time to continue to the next one. Which is going to be the second one in a row that will actually give us one of the special gems. But this time around it's going to be the purple gem. Even though we're not able to pick it up yet because of missing the final gem. And that one is actually required. So technically, this is the final gem, you might say. <laughs> we don't have to care about playing the stage without dying. And the stage is going to be lights out. Like I promised in the previous episode, a stage where darkness is going to be our main gimmick. Right now, in my room, it is dark. It is dark outside, and I'm playing without my lights on to make this stage extra interesting. <laughs> lights out is a stage where darkness is not going to be your friend. However, we have one way to remedy the darkness. The Aku Akus in the stage. They are not going to be just simple Aku Akus. They are also going to be our light in darkness. But what makes these stages more interesting is the fact that these Aku Akus won't stay lit for forever. They will run out at some point. So make sure you reach the next one in time. And in all honesty, even with the lights on, it's still a bit difficult to see where you're going. You're not able to see very far ahead of you. And especially since you need to do the stage fast in order to make sure the Aku Aku doesn't run out. <laughs> you are always kind of in a hurry in this stage. And then you can get surprised by not being able to see very far ahead of you. Yeah, for this simple reason this can be a very challenging stage. <laughs> Eventually, still something I can do, I have no doubt. The second one of the stages is the one I'm really fearing. The first one shouldn't be a problem. One up. Oh, be careful for the rats running around here. They have an evil red glow in their eyes, which is interesting because those you can actually also see the moment the room turns dark again. <laughs> Checkpoint. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, and make sure not to get hit. <laughs> because the Aku Aku still functions as your extra hit. But if you lose this one, you also lose your light. <laughs> yeah, and then you usually end up falling into the endless pits. Because you're not able to see where you're going anymore. Of course, in theory, you can still play. If you're able to know the stage from memory and actually make all of the jumps blindly. That would be a very uh, cool feat if you're able to do that. But uh, <laughs> not me. Well, here we find the yellow platform. Platform for the gem that we are missing. And that one we need to pick up first. No, oh, really? Oh. Should have more patience. That's something I'm usually really bad at, at video games. Having patience. <laughs> Hi, yellow platform. Not interested in you. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Need to make sure not to hold back at all over there. Oh, I'm surprised it didn't get hit there. <laughs> there we go. And that was the first of the darkness stages. We did miss three of the boxes, but that's something we cannot help. We need the yellow gem in order to get to the final three boxes. The yellow gem is going to come up in one of the later stages, not this one. This is going to be Jaws of Darkness, just a regular stage for a regular gem. But as you can see by the little fade out at the top left, it also contains a key. So that stage that we can actually see at the top left of us is going to be unlocked the moment we find the Cortex bonus in this stage. Be on the lookout for Cortex symbols in Jaws of Darkness. Which is indeed also called darkness in the title, but is not per se 
the darkness stage. It is not going to be light, of course, but <laughs> it's not going to be another stage where we need to find Aku Akus for lighting. Now, this is actually the second temple interior stage, as you can see. And we also did on the second island already. And here's going to be the second of those, finally. <laughs> I must admit, this stage officially also requires another special gem before you're able to get the clear gem. But that is one of the special gems we already have. <laughs> because the one we need here is actually the blue gem. And that one is already in our possession, as you may know. So for this stage, we can indeed immediately go for 100%. First corridor. In the previous stage, I really struggled with uh, bats spawning in these corridors. <laughs> Got hit by every single one of them. Once again, the problem of not having patience. This time around, I should be able to get past one at least. Like this one. <laughs> Already proving that I'm indeed able to do it. <laughs> oh, really? Is it really necessary? <laughs> Apparently it is. Now here we need to be careful. We need to use a platform towards the camera. But there's once again going to be spears in the way. So try to be patient. <laughs> Even though I know that is not easy to do. Jump to safety. Oh, speaking of safety, the TNT crate doesn't look very healthy. Definitely make sure not to blow it up. Because the bottom crate is the first Cortex symbol. And the moment this crate blows up... It will take the symbol with it, so <laughs> you won't be able to collect it anymore. Make sure to get that one first. Otherwise you need to start over. There's also still uh, Tana symbols in the stage. That is only interesting for the crates. The Cortex symbol we need in order to obtain the key in this stage. And of course also crates. <laughs> it's not like there's not going to be crates in that one. Ah, look at what we have here. First of all, make sure to get the crate. <laughs> and second of all, the blue platform is over here. If you have the blue gem, you can actually go to the secret area. Make sure to get on top of this right tower over here, because there's an off-screen crate over here. The first time I played this game, I actually um, spent a lot of time looking for that one, so I made sure not to forget about it anymore. <laughs> you can imagine the first time I played this stage, I actually ended up missing one crate in the end. Guess which one that was. <laughs> anyway, let's go. There's a tricky platform on very small platforms. Blue gem platforms, but still, they're very small, so the platform is not easy. <laughs> There's a very big amount of crates here, so it's very handy if you have invincibility there. <laughs> and then we still need to continue, because there's still more. crate so be careful there's also a crate on top of here so hit the first one then jump get the one on top and get out of here in time before you get killed <laughs> here's three crates in a row awesome little bouncing section therefore and that will take us back to the main part of the stage if you would have gone straight on from the first blue platform that we found you would have ended up here you don't have to go back, there's no crates that you miss on that pathway. You should have every single one of them by this point. Yeah, so far I'm doing the bats a bit better compared to the previous stage. <laughs> Squeeze your way through here and find the next checkpoint, luckily. At least this stage we don't have to do without dying. That we only have to do in the time attack mode. Not quite yet. <laughs> Patient. See, I can be patient. Difficult for me to do, but I can do it. <laughs> Sometimes. Alright, one word of caution yet again. The question mark we see here is once again going to be a Cortex symbol. So make sure to get it before this TNT crate in this stack over here gets a chance to blow it up. <laughs> oh, that was too late. <laughs> well, at least it was not too late for the Cortex symbol. And floating Wampa Fruit in mid-air, we should also know what that means by now. <laughs> Had to deal with that plenty of times already. It's also where the final Cortex symbol is going to be. Right over here. And to spawn the bonus that will give us the key. For the second optional stage in this game. Let's go see how difficult it is going to be. 
bounce. Time this correctly because you don't want to go too early. You want to be away from the explosion, but also make sure the explosion has happened already so the boxes under you will have formed. <laughs> this crate will blow up and hit switch, but also blow up everything else. So jump at the exact right time to avoid the explosion. I still land over here so you can get the crates that will form. Nice try, uh, Cortex, but I still got first try. <laughs> Pick up the key and we can leave. Still plenty of more crates to get. We also still have the Tana bonus we need to find after all. Let's get on this platform over here. It's a bit difficult to see. But this is our way back. And just like that other part, it has invisible platforms. Which we can use to get back to the main pathway. Let's get the stripe block first. And then hit the trampoline. And get the Tana symbol number two. Third one is going to be near the end. Oh, speaking of end, I'm already done. <laughs> Just not in the way I wanted to. Luckily the bonuses function as a checkpoint. Still think that is a good idea of this game. <laughs> yeah, this is where we were. Apparently this is another pixel precise jump. Don't go too early. And here is Tana number three. The gem is also going to form here already, as you can see. So you can safely assume all of the remaining crates are going to be in this bonus. 23 of them. Oh, the entry crate. Let's go quickly. <laughs> oh, I see how this works. But I can cheese it. I can simply go back and avoid the explosion that way. <laughs> I think the intended way is to actually try to um, break your way through these towers in time before the TNT crates blow up. But you can simply avoid them by going backwards as well. <laughs> and this way the bonus still becomes really easy. One hundred and twelve. Opening the crate the moment we return from the bonus. <laughs> and now all we have to do is get ourselves towards the exit path. Time this correctly because these walls can be a bit tricky. And finish off. Jaws of Darkness. Perfect even. Double perfect because we got the gem. But also the key. Two keys, 20 gems. And completion rate rockets to 82%. <laughs> this was a fine stage. But we can do even better, can't we? We can actually move on, not to Castle Machinery, that's a continuation of the game. <laughs> Currently I'm interested in the optional stage that actually unlocks at the pathway of Lights Out. And that is not for nothing, because Fumbling in the Dark is going to be the second of the Darkness stages. And as you may expect, this is going to be a far more difficult one. It is not optional for nothing, and it is not the second stage in this gimmick for nothing. <laughs> First things first, go back from the beginning, because the first couple of crates are going to be hiding right over here. Even at the beginning of the stage, the stage is already tricky. <laughs> Something we already saw at the second bridge stage as well. There, they actually also pulled this trick. It can be a bit annoying if you die before the first checkpoint, because then you need to do this again. <laughs> Just try to get to the first checkpoint before falling off the stage. We reach the Aku Aku in time. Oh, let's not take any chances. Even though not taking any chances and therefore playing more slowly is also not a wise idea in a stage like this. <laughs> because the Aku Aku is going to run out at some point. Oh, help. Oh, help. <laughs> yeah, there was no way that was going to end well. I indeed took too long. Need to do this again. I'm sorry. <laughs> the stage is not easy. The stage forces you to play as a speedrun, even in the regular way. <laughs> and this is not even a time attack yet. It's going to be even worse there. I can remember whenever playing the game for the first time, when I actually went for the relics. This one took me over an hour, not not kidding. <laughs> it took me over an hour to actually clear this one. 
And I'm pretty sure I didn't even get the golden relic, I just got the sapphire one. <laughs> this stage is so difficult to do fast. <laughs> First part is the easy part. The final part is so. Oh. I'm calling this first part the easy part. What am I doing? Oh, wow! <laughs> I even start killing myself right at the start already now. <laughs> what was I saying about having patience? <laughs> Trying to do the stage correctly also requires a lot of patience because you can clearly see the first checkpoint is really deep into the stage. I got pretty far in that stage, yet still no checkpoint. I'm also running out of time, so I better do this correctly uh, quickly, otherwise uh, <laughs> I need to start recording a 30 minute episode again. Because I wouldn't be surprised, it actually takes me 10 minutes before I'm able to clear this one. <laughs> this stage is so freaking difficult. I'm forcing you to do it fast. And that is something that is apparently not really working out for me, so... Um, yeah. I think I'm going to take my time next time. It's not working out if I'm trying to do it fast. <laughs> Treaks out. See you in the next one. <laughs>